Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, who's here? Say good morning so I'll know who's here. I see I have one person up early. <laughs> hey, Mima. Good morning, love you. Happy Mother's Day. I just wanted to share my heart um, this morning. I was trying to figure out what I could do different for Mother's Day instead of uh, receiving Mother's Day accolades. I wanted to just share some uh, wisdoms I've learned in my life. So this is how I decided to start my Mother's Day. I'm going to wait a few more minutes and try to give some others a chance to uh, come on before I start. So just enjoy my music. This is me. Who's that? I know who you are, Mima. <laughs> I know exactly who you are. Have a great Mother's Day. Can you hear my music? Is it too loud? I just want it to be playing a little softly in the background. Mima, can you hear? Can you hear the music in the background? Please say yes or no so I'll know. Oh, great, thank you. Great, great, great. I'm about to begin. I don't plan on being here long. I can talk, but <laughs> I don't plan on being here long. But I just wanted to share, um, gosh, maybe six years ago now, I finally got done a book that's been in my heart on parenting. And it's basic, basically things I learned about parenting that also helped to heal me from my past hurts. So I put it all in a book and the thought has come to me quite a few times, but I let it get away, you know, because of other things. But I want to start sharing from this self-published book and in case you can't see it it says the high calling parenting from God's perspective so I'm just sharing with everyone that was shared with me I don't claim uh, to be the most articulate uh, I don't claim to uh, always use my grammar well I don't claim to, which I don't have degrees and all of these, but the wisdom that God gives is priceless. And I do have that. And I just want to share on this 2018 Mother's Day morning. And I'm going to start by just reading my own introduction from the book, okay? I hope this blesses someone today. And if it does, all I ask is that you share the page. Don't just watch it, just to share it um, from what we all see that's going on in our communities from the lowest of income to the highest of income. We're seeing the same things. So there are some things that happen that money can't buy. 
that we need to instill in ourselves so that we can instill into our children to help them on this journey called life, okay? So I'm going to start. This is, this is where the book starts. Think of receiving a long letter from a friend. And that's how this book is meant. Exactly like I did it. You will be a successful book. It's full of my own personal stories, wisdoms, and principles that if applied, you will have a great time while doing the best and hardest job in the world, being a parent. What if I told you when you follow biblical principles found within these pages, your family would be a family that other families want to follow? I want this book, I wanted this book to be completed over a year ago, but without the funds I needed for a publisher, editor, illustrator, and graphic designer, it got put off, but under the direction of the Holy Spirit, God's helper for us. I did it, so this is it. I'm asking that you look past any grammatic errors in the wording and receive the message that I'm just trying to convey to you. You may be interested in just how this book started. I realized that as a single parent with my own problems and many insecurities, God wanted me to write a book on parenting. I said, who, me? I asked God, write a book, and especially on parenting, while still dealing and processing my own feelings from my childhood and my experiences in life. Me, I'm not a child psychologist, a well-known author, or expert with a PhD. But one thing I do, I do know the voice of God. I have survived many things in life. I am an overcomer and so are you. While still knowing all of that, I needed to be convinced further. So for years I have been jotting down notes from time to time while my children, all the way back to when my children were toddlers. But our Father God is so loving and patient with us. And thinking back, I, would, I personally would have been so impatient with someone taking so long to do what I asked them to do. But that's not how God is with me or with any of us, and I'm forever grateful. The type of patience is also how He wants us to be with our children while they go through their processes of understanding and personal growth. Well, not to get ahead of myself in the book, I finally realized with all I had learned and had to overcome in my life, God saw me as the perfect one to do a book on parenting. When I think about it now, I laugh at myself and I'm reminded of Moses who, like me, tried to give God all the excuses in the world why God must be mistaken in giving him such an assignment, an awesome responsibility. So finally, I said, yes, Lord, your will be done through me. I'm going to stop right here for a second, and I'm going to get back to this, but I just want to share. Um... I often hear people say, your will be done. But we have to know that God is not going to make us do what he has willed for our life. We have to submit ourselves to what he wants. Not saying it's going to be easy, not by a long shot. Mothering or anything else is not easy. But know if he called you to it, he knows within you, even if it's deep, like it was with me, even if it's deep down and you had so many suppressed things that you have in you the ability to bring out what he wants. Isn't that something? 
because he knows us better than we know ourselves. He's such a wonderful father. Okay, I'll continue. In former years, I had allowed my own narrow mind of thinking to keep me blinded to all God wanted to do in me and through me. I've been sharing with mothers for years, um, but still didn't see that one and one always adds up to two. You know, just, just a little bit, a little hard-headed. But to be honest, it was more out of fear than anything else. Fear of the unknown, fear of stepping out and doing something that I, in my own ability, didn't feel qualified for. But you know what? That's what made it God. Because if I could do it, man, my own ability, then I wouldn't see him. God is smart. He's not going to work himself out of a job. That's his job to be there for us. <laughs> uh, we see ourselves, where we are, and our issues. But God sees us in the completion of his purpose for our life. It's his purpose that we're saying. And today, I'm grateful for a renewed mind and a continual renewed mind. Um, the renewing of our mind never stops. It never stops. Every day we need to put off something and put on something new. Um, this seems like the fourth day in a row I've said this to somebody. When you're used to doing something, it becomes a habit, whether it's a good habit or a bad habit. So if you wanna start something new, you need to do it for 21, 21 days or 21 times consecutively, at least, to break something and to start something new. So you don't want to end something bad without putting something new in it as well. I endeavor to speak to you on parenting from God's perspective, which is the title of the book the Lord gave me. It's actually the high calling parenting from God's perspective. At the top, it says, the creator best knows how to bring out the best in his creation. Together, you make a dynamic team. Together. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. I endeavor to speak to you on parenting from God's perspective. Subsequently, in these pages, I share openly Many of the lessons I've learned, y'all know I'm open. I put myself out there. People don't have to um, speculate or wonder. I'm an open book. <laughs> I'm an open book. Because I lean, I lean on God. Subsequently, in these pages, I share openly many of the lessons I learned through my life to assist you and your family. It is never about me or any of us but about his glory being seen on earth. But it can't be done without including him in the raising of our children. I will be open and transparent like I am as a woman, as a single parent, as I share God's wisdom and his insights to me. Sharing with you the kingdom principles he's shown me, the ones where I listened for the first time, and those to my chagrin after multiple, multiple times of being instructed, I finally listened. If you use his directions, your family will flourish. Of this, I am a witness. Your success as a parent is important to God. What parents wants to watch their child fail at parenting? None. God created family, the rock which every part of our society stands. When our families are strong, so will every other part of the world's society strengthen. You see why there's so much going on? Because the rock which everything else stands, it's not where it should be. Successes and failures are a result of the decisions we make. And my goal with this book is to give you some spiritual models to follow to make your family the way God intended, not the way I intended. These are just what he showed me 
So you go to him and your prayer time and your meditation time to find out the things he wants to include in your family to make it the way he wants it to be, okay? No matter how good you feel your family may be today, but according to Isaiah 55 and 8, there is a big difference in the way we think versus God's thoughts on everything attached to our life, and that includes our family. This book is not to try to convince you to do exactly as I am raising my kids. It is to encourage you in every chapter to be led by the Spirit of God, however He chooses to show you. Early on in my life, I allowed circumstances to so overwhelm me that I wasn't able to see past them, to tap into the eternal gifts God have pre-programmed into me before my mom and dad even met and thought of me. I, like many of you, had given my heart over to God and I would go to heaven, but I was still so bound up in my mind. So I wasn't able to experience the fullest of the Lord's purpose for my life. We only see exactly where we are, but he sees around those corners, the big pictures, and his way is always right. No matter how you choose to believe in reference to your faith, the principle spoken here will assist you. Just like the principle of gravity, what goes up will come down. God never fails. Any failure is because we miss something in the execution of his instructions. All I ask is that you read what I'm saying with an open mind and be willing to try something you've never done before. It doesn't mean that you will even change the things you do, but you just may have a different outlook on your life and trying things God's way. The first step to solving any problem is to first realize that we have one. And unfortunately, poor problem, I'm sorry, poor parenting is a problem that spreads throughout the globe. Many of the world's problems would change if we changed our homes. We are the most influential and important person in our child's life. At times, from actions I personally witnessed, I think as parents, we really don't value our own worth and underplay our stamp on the lives of those who at two years old just want to be just like us. Why have I come to these assumptions, you may ask? As the most powerful earthly authority in your child's life, if we reflect what we feel, how we model before our children in searching out knowledge, that knowledge and wisdom, it only comes from God. As a parent, you are the first nurturer, leader, and mentor to your children. Make sure you teach them to do what you do and not what you say. People travel and spend funds as needed to ascend, to attend seminars and classes about self-improvement, exercise, learning how to lead companies, but will we find a class or a book to better ourselves with the most important duty, parenting? It will help you in assisting you how to sculpt a life. My ultimate goal as I raised my children was to leave them not needing to recover from how I raised them. I need to say that again. And it's true. My ultimate goal as I raised my children was to leave them not needing to recover from how I raised them. What is interesting to me, 
that most churches who offer different forms of classes, retreats, men and women's Bible studies on many subjects, but people never want to touch parenting. Why do you never want to touch the, one of the most important things you can teach? I don't, I don't understand that. I never have. <laughs> I guess that's why God put it on my heart. And that's, that's what he's given me to do. Even, even when I think about in 2001, when the Lord, um, when the Lord told me that he wanted me to start a company, a nonprofit, but whatever it is, to call it mother. And I remember I was on my way to work and I was on the bus and I was just meditating on the Lord as I rode in and I heard, okay, it's time. And that was in 2001. And I said, okay, mother, hmm, what is that? I know it's an acronym. I know it just can't be called mother. And I heard Holy Spirit so clearly said, my opportunity to help everyone resource. And I wanted to laugh, but I was on the bus and I didn't want people looking at me like they needed to call the guys with the white coats and put it in the back. Y'all yo, who know me, you know I'm silly too. So I have to do something to make you laugh as well. But I, um, I knew it. Of course, how can you not know that that was God? Because it, it was, it was, it was effortless. It just came out of my spirit. It was effortless. Mother, my opportunity to help everyone resource. So I know my purpose <laughs> ah, was to be a mother and to teach people how God wants us to mother. It's not about me, y'all. I'm just a vessel that has said yes. I'm just a vessel who said yes, but let me continue. Again, if you're just tuning in, hey, Will and Nat, love you. Happy Mother's Day. Patsy Ford Holmes, glad you're here too. Happy Mother's Day. I'm, uh, the Lord put on my heart, and last night I was tired. I had a great day yesterday with uh, my niece who her birthday was celebrated yesterday, and my kids came with me. We just had a great time. I love you too, Willie. And congrats on a new place. Yay. Uh, the book, The High Calling, Parenting from God's Perspective. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to go through this entire book. And I think it may be something I do every Sunday morning. Okay, so if you guys would get up early and watch with me live, I'd appreciate it. But either way, if you don't watch live, watch later. And share this on your um, social media pages, I'd appreciate it. Because the only thing, the only thing I want to do is to make our, parent, make our family stronger. Okay? Thanks, then. Let me get back to this introduction. I'm still reading. Okay. My ultimate goal as I raise my children, I'm going back a little bit, is to leave them not needing to recover from how I reared them. And then I went and talked about the churches. Raising a great child shouldn't be like rolling dice. You never know what you want to get. Or <laughs> like that favorite part in my movie uh, from Forrest Gump. You know, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. It's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that. God doesn't want it like that. He wants us to know how to bring out the best and the jewels he's given us. Now, not allowing our own insecurities and, and fears and failures. I, you know, I told my friend yesterday, I told him yesterday, you know, I... Um, I said, it's good to have memory. I said, but sometimes our memories can hold us back because we're, we're focusing on the negative memory instead of focusing on, like having a laser focus on where we want to go. So anyway, it's easy for me to get sidetracked and start teaching on something else. Let me stay right here. All right, general 
Colin Powell said, there is no secret to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failures. Learn from them so we won't repeat them. We see on the news and on talk shows daily, time spent on families trying to correct problems after the fact. But if we, as a generation, look, what is that? Oh, y'all, a piece of lint fell from my ceiling fan? Jesus. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. There is a need to get parents to realize that the most important thing we can do is to invest time into learning the skills for us to be better, which translate into us being a better parent. In the faith community, pastors, priests, rabbis spend most of their time. If you talk to any, you talk to them about the issues they um, counsel on. Most of them are relational issues in the family between the husband and the wife or the parents and the children. In bigness, they all talk about the bottom line. If you are a business owner, you make an investment in your employees' life by offering or paying for them to learn their job. Why is it we as people don't make that same investment in our relationships, in our children? It's an investment, but the, response, but the results are priceless. The results are priceless, the time it takes to learn to be a better you, the, the energy. It takes a lot of energy, it's not easy, but it's doable. Jesse Duplantis said that. I never forgot that. It's not easy, but it's doable. You and your children will be happy and more productive. I'm going to talk about a local business. A business on the East Coast called Wegmans is a model for business to have a happy, knowledgeable, and well-trained employee creates a better experience for customers. Our children are our customers. Isn't that something? Customer service, which is a big deal to me. I do not like bad customer service. In anything, in businesses, don't let me walk up to the desk and you're on the phone and you don't even nod to acknowledge you see me. Our kids say, Mommy, Daddy, do you see me? Do you hear me? Do you know how I need you to love me? You're pushing me off because you're tired, but you don't know what happened in school today. Love me. Learn how I need to be loved. See them. Give them good customer service. A happy parent means a happy child. It is a smart business model to have training in the area of employee positions and it's the master key to improve productivity. You want to improve productivity in your family. Family is a business and treat it as such. So if you make the time and attention and give it what it needs, it will grow and, <laughs> and pay you great, great dividends. So, why don't we as parents be the model for our kids? I think, okay, so that was the introduction. And I think I'm going to go to the first chapter, which is called Time. And then after that, I'll let you go. And if it's not every Sunday morning, I will post something to let you know when I'll do this again. Oh guys, you see the art behind you? These are my my latest creations. I'm getting ready for the summer to do a lot of um, 
you know, art shows and fairs and go out and sell my stuff. I'll, I'm selling the originals, but I'll also I'll be making some um, some print copies. So the print copies will be less than the original. The costs differ because the time involved difference differs. It depends on how many hours it took me to pee, to do the piece that's how much I charge so if you ever want a piece just let me know and I even um, what I do a lot of for myself if you see this one right here that's based on a dream I am a dreamer so and that's what started me painting too um, a dream I had five years ago um, if you have a dream um, I can paint that for you just explain it to me and I'll paint that for you as well, okay? But I, I just, since I'm looking and I was like, oh yeah, my artist behind me, I'll um, mention that. First chapter is called Time. He has made everything beautiful in his time, so he has put eternity in our hearts. Ecclesiastics 3.11 In the spring of 2006, the publishers of the Old Oxford English Dictionary said that the word time is one of the most used words in the English language. Scientists, philosophers, and Bible scholars have perpetually puzzled over this word, its origin and meaning of its creation. The noun definition is the indefinite continued process of existence and events in the past presence and future regarded as a whole scripture tell us about time in many passages God lives in eternity and time is a tool for us to measure it I once heard it said the time is so that we will have hope that tomorrow will be better than today I don't know if anyone else has um, has started but I, again I wanted to say Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. For me, years ago, at many moments in my life, having that hope for a better tomorrow was a necessity. There is a big reason that this subject is the first chapter in this book. In my opinion, this is the most important chapter of the book. If we who love them, our children, don't invest time into them, I guarantee you someone else will. Some of us will have more time to spend with our children than others, but it's not the quantity, but it's the quality of the time that matters most. Our children do realize that we have duties to keep us from doing some things that we would like to do with them. They realize that because I'm sure you're talking to them and you let them know um, how important they are, but let them know about the duties you have as their, as their mom and dad as well. Engage time in living in the moment. That's what's important. Living in the moment. <laughs> uh, if either my kids watch this, they will jump on and say, yup, yup. I spent a lot of time with my kids and I lived in a moment, but I had this habit. Friday was our family day. And so every Friday, they had something to look forward to. They knew that I was going to go out and buy a movie and we were going to sit as a family with some popcorn, all kind of junk food and sit and watch the movie. Well... They're watching the movie and they're all in it. And I liked it too. And then I'm remembering, oh shoot, I forgot to do something. And I'd get up, like get up and go wash the dishes. And they were like, mom, mom, <laughs> come back and sit down. See, I, wa I, I wasn't living, and it didn't happen all the time, but it happened. It happened. Um, where I wasn't, engaged in the moment when you're with them be with them give them all of you make sure how and make sure they know that they are important make sure that 
that they know that they are important. And then I just put some examples here. I said things like eating eating dinner together and having good conversations are vital. Put the phone down. Talk to them. Talk to them. Involving them in the things you enjoy and vice versa. Get involved in things they enjoy. You may not like a video game. They love a your son loves a video game. What I can assure you, his face will light up if you one day and you start like move over and they're looking at you like what? Like show me how you play this. That'll mean the world to them because you are involved in their world. Something that they like. Something as simple as that. Involving them in the things you enjoy involved and vice versa. Without our investment of time, gangs, false religions, child predators, and a host of negative people will pay them the attention we aren't. Like a newborn won't develop fully without the touch of its mother, neither with children without our input at every stage of their development. Every stage. They don't need you at two, like they do at 12, or like they do at 22. But they still need you, just differently, just differently. Especially in our fast-paced society in which we live in today, our children are faced with many choices daily. We never imagined. Y'all, I'm grateful that my kids are grown now because for real, our children are faced with things that we've never, so it's more important than ever that they have us um, leading and guiding them into the truth of their life as we allow Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, telling us for them. It's just, it's just a level. Okay, God tells us, we tell them. God tells us, we tell them. Say it again. God tells us. We listen and we tell them. Uh, the most priceless gift we can share with anyone is our time and attention. What we pay attention to is what we treasure. So don't think you're just giving your, your child things and then that's enough. That's not enough. That's not enough at all. Our children are crying out for our attention. Either good or bad. Sometimes, sometimes kids may act up. Because if they're not acting up, it's like they're not there. These same children grow into adulthood and are still attention seekers. And it's clearly seen through their clothes, their hair, and some other things. They're seeking attention. I watch the ages of 12 to 25 year olds who sometimes seem to be lost with no direction as they walk through life. In 2016, with all the information and technology available to our children, they should be doing better, not worse in many areas of life with all the doors presented to them. They have a lot of negative things, but they have a lot of positive things too. So with all these positive things, why aren't our children doing better? <laughs> doors, like the doors found in the childhood story of Alice in Wonderland. In the first chapter of the story, Alice is feeling bored sitting on the river bank with her sister. She even notices a rabbit with a watch who runs past. Curious as children are, she goes behind it and falls down a rabbit hole. Then suddenly, she is in a hall with many doors of all sizes. She finds a small key to a door, but it's too small for her to fit. Oh wow, I've been here for a while. Let me, let me go back. Curious as children are, she goes behind it and falls down a rabbit hole. Then suddenly, 
She is in a hall with many locked doors of all sizes. She finds a small key to a door, but it's too small for her to fit in. But it looks pretty. We know as adults that many of the things that look good are bad for us. So what about to a child? She next discovers a bottle on a table labeled, drink me. She did and the contents called the contents, sorry, caused her to shrink. She is now too small to reach the key that she has left on the table. She then eats a piece of cake with eat me written on it as this chapter closes. I said that to say every decision, every decision has a consequence. And our job is to see that we have given our children to make, given our children the right information to make a sound decision. Our children have all types of doors open to them every day, but without our continual time with them, leading them in the right direction, what will they choose? They, like Alice, will drink the wrong thing that shrinks them from the person they were intended to be. Maybe they will even eat the wrong thing that opens doors for their life that should have been kept closed and locked. Now we have lost precious time and have to try and undo the damage and return them to God's original purpose for their life. We don't have time for that. We should not allow things such as technology, social media, lifelike video games, internet, reality TV, and many other things to teach our children how to think and behave instead of us, the adults in their lives. The television is that the, is just the vision that the producers of whatever that scene is want you to see and believe. It's not the full picture. It doesn't mean that that's real. Nothing is real about reality TV. That, that we as adults spend so much time allowing to entertain us. The reality of our life and families need our attention. But this generation seems to crave being entertained. Why do we seem to be drawn to the oasis of sitcoms, watching every news station playing the same news, which tends to be most time full of sensationalism with all of their editorial biases? Their goal is to manipulate us to think the way they want us to, just like in reality TV, to distract us from what's really important and from what's really going on in our society and that keeps us from our family as well and from spending quality time with our family. Start making a difference with your time at home first. Jesus said to them, surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself and you will tell me, do hear in your homework that we have learned that you did in Capernaum. Luke 4.23 Heal your home. Heal your home. But if any provided not for his own, and especially his own household, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5 and 8 With all my heart, I believe this distraction and other factors are some of the major reasons that bullying of every type is so embedded in our society. It's just not with our children, but as a society as a whole. Adults are the biggest offenders in this ap epidemic. It's not a new thing, but why are our children suffering from it more now than ever? One would think that as people mature and progress through life, they would stop behaviors of their youth. Unfortunately, this is not always the case. The goal of a bully is to gain power over another person and to make himself or herself the dominant to humiliate victims and to show them who's the boss. This world is hungry for power and status. The haves against the have-nots are shown everywhere 
in front of our children. Isn't that just like some adults, you know? As I watch people on social media, comments in newspapers, editorials, articles, and blogs, it's no wonder we have an epidemic in schools about bullying. They are learning this behavior from adults around them. I don't think if you, if you think you're hiding your ways, your child sees and knows and will eventually duplicate what is, what is displayed in front of them. If you attack anyone from their weight to what they believe personally, that is bullying, plain and simple. We don't have to agree, but as an adult, by now we should have learned how to be agreeable. But we can't do that if we don't spend time. It's all about time. So if our time is spent in our children seeing all of the negative parts of us and, and even in the negativity, um, when we make a mistake in front of our child, tell them, you're like, you know what? Mama was wrong. I should have handled that better than that. And then, and then use that as a lesson for them as well. Everything is a lesson. I can tell you, my daughter will tell you, and she, she thinks about it fondly now, but when she was a kid, she said, Ma, you got on my nerves. You made everything a teachable moment. <laughs> but I wanted them to be better than me. I wanted them not to have to go through some of the stuff. I had to go through in my mind. I, I wanted them to have skills. I wanted them to have a lot of life skills. But I, that is only done as we spend time with them. That is only done as we Hello! How are you, Steffi? I don't know if you're a mom, but if so, happy Mother's Day. Glad you're with us this morning. I'm teaching from a book the Lord gave me. The High Calling Parenting from God's Perspective. So I'll be doing this probably every, every early every Sunday morning for a while. So probably about 6 a.m., 6 or 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings. That's, that's what I'm hearing I should do. But let me get back to this. <laughs> uh, here I go with some of my own personal stories in, in the book. Okay. Our children's eyes are always learning and watching us and what we do. For example, my, my daughter around the age of three or four was in the car with me one day on our way to some location, I don't recall. We were at the light. The light turned from red to green. She from the back seat in her child seat hollered. What is wrong with you people? Don't you see that the light has changed? Hurry up. She had little girl rage, y'all. But I sat there and my mouth open and I realized, oh no. She's heard me reacting that way. I wanted to laugh, but it taught me a clear lesson, a clear lesson in how I responded. Children really are you, uh, little sponges. So why are you surprised by their actions? If you want them to be better, be better in front of them. In the political world, people resort to bullying or allowing themselves to be bullied by someone who wants them to change their mind on an issue or sway how they, how they think you should vote. It's okay for people to disagree with each other on issue. It's when we make personal attacks is when you become a bully. I have seen people on both sides of the aisle in the political arena come out strong against bullying in schools, but then turn around and bully others who may not believe how they believe on an issue. And some have even said to vote away. Isn't that bullying? But as I said earlier, but we adults <laughs> are the ones teaching them. Stop saying one thing for doing another. Home, church, political. Stop saying one thing for doing another. 
We as a society have lost the community aspect of parenting. We've lost the community aspect of community. I remember um, when the Lord told me um, to step out in the political field. The first person I saw, which was an older African American gentleman, made me so angry when his, hey Marilyn, good morning and happy Mother's Day. He made me so angry with his response. I was telling him what I knew God wanted. I'm holding this up so y'all can see. This is what I'm talking about through the, through the book the Lord uh, gave me. I was telling him what I was about to do. And he said, your daughter's graduating this year, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, what are you doing that for? You don't have any kids there. It hurt my heart. <laughs> And I laughed just like I did just now. I said, you know what? I'm doing it to keep people from thinking just like you did. Like it's like everything we do has to be about us and ours. It's a lot bigger than that. Why, why are we making our world so small when there are so many people need our help in so many different ways? But um, it was something I just read that made me remember remember that because I was reading we as a society have lost the community aspect in community and in parenting a long time ago when I was a child children used to be raised with an extended family I remember at school the registrar lived on the next street behind me and if she saw me doing something she knew my parents wouldn't like all she had to do was look at me because I knew the next thing would be her placing a call to my parents, which I did not want. What happened to our communities? An African proverb said, it takes a village to raise a child. We have been programmed somehow with all of our modern conveniences that we don't need any of those so-called old-fashioned ideas. But yeah, we really do. Thank you, Wanda. Happy Mother's Day to you too, darling. I think in today is nobody can tell me what to do with my child or how to raise our child. Allow me to pose this question to you. What would you do if I told you that there is someone who has knowledge to tell you everything you ever needed to know how to bring out the best in your child? Would you listen to them? Of course you would, because no parent wants anything but the best for their child. It is the Creator Himself, the Elohim God. In His wisdom, He allowed your child's spirit to leave heaven and landed them in your care for you to nurture. He allowed you to have them from the moment of conception. He saw everything there was to know about them and has given you the honor and privilege of raising them. There is a beautiful song performed by Garth Brooks called Mom. You know what? I haven't thought about that in a while. I'm a, as soon as I finish this live, I'm going to post this to my page. You all will enjoy it. It's about God talking to a baby who is afraid to leave heaven to come to earth. God tells the baby about a special person whose only goal in life is to make sure that they will always be all right. That song brings me to tears every time as it simply states the importance of parenthood so we can comprehend in our mind if God gave you your children, you have everything in you to bring out the best in them when you partner with Him. It is a partnership, but we tend to forget that. But it is a partnership. God is not going to work himself out of a job as our father. It is a partnership. We can't do this without him. Hi, Amber. Tell your mom I said happy Mother's Day. Pastor Robin, Bishop, happy Mother's Day, my friend and worker in ministry. Love you. Even if you don't see it yourself, don't be or don't feel bad. I didn't see that I had within me. God knows I didn't see it. 
but I'm so glad I didn't see it because if I I'm about to cry because if I thought that I knew everything then I wouldn't have depended on God then my children would not have turned out like they are to God be the glory y'all to God be the glory I had so much junk in my head that I loved my kids enough to depend on God even down to if they did something that I thought they needed to be corrected for I would say okay what do you want me to do father Sometimes he'd say, talk to him. Sometimes he would say, take that away. Sometimes he would say, spank him. Because he knows them best. He knows our children the best. But why is it we think we can do it on our own? But look at our families. Look at our children. And I don't say this to make anybody feel bad for not for not knowing. But start where you are today. Do better. Start where you are. Repent. Repent. Repent to your children. You know, there are so many children have, that have never heard their, their, their parents say, you know, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I should have did better. That's pride. And pride becomes pride coming before the fall. Oh, Jesus. Okay, anyway. Whew, let me get back. Okay. <clears throat> One of my favorite scriptures. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, save the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. That's from Jeremiah 29 and 11. Who knows any product? better than its manufacturer. I'm still talking under time. I'm still under the first chapter which talks about time, spending time with our kids. There is no other who can show you how to bring out the best in your in the gift of your son or daughter other than the creator. Since he knows the amount of hairs on your head and your child's head, how would he not know how to show you how to bring out the best in them. So with your time and attention, leaning on his leading, you have the best team for your child. When you purchase something from the most expensive item to the least expensive item, it comes with a set of instructions and a warranty. Everything is designed to function by an instruction or a law. The item even includes a guarantee to the success of the product as long as you follow the instructions. When you read the instructions on something you purchase, they don't explain why they are telling you to do the do's and don'ts, and for the most part you following them. But for some reason, people follow instructions for products, but not for people. It has always been in the plan of God to help us in life, and that includes raising the jewels he has given us called children, more precious to him. Children are more precious to God <laughs> than any diamond, but he won't, he won't make us consult him. My children got older, and it was time to send them to school. I was determined that I was going to be the one to teach them by example how to think and react in this life. We are their first teacher and I wanted them prepared to make an impact on the world and not just be impacted by the world outside of our home. I believe that my job as their mom was to produce giants in the world that would dominate whatever area of life they decided and wanted while while leaning them towards the gifts I saw in them. Spending time with them and living a good example before them. I can't say that I always got it right, but daily that was my goal. 
as God taught me in situations, I taught them. Glory to Jesus. So for me, it was a no-brainer. If I was going to do this thing called parenting right, I had to spend time listening for God's direction. Submitting to God for my children gave me a double blessing. I received healing for many emotional scars from my past. It was a kind of two-for-one sale. I learned also that the more time I spent with God, the more I wanted to spend time pouring into my children. It was a wonderful domino effect. I became better as a woman and a mother, and my children benefited from my time with God. God's glory was being seen in the relationship of our little family of three. Financially, I wanted to give them the world on a platter, but that was not our path in life. We did not have a lot of things, stuff, that the world will call being successful, but we were so wealthy. Whew. We shared all of the most important things that no amount of money would ever be able to purchase our time. I would talk to them and would explain to them why they didn't have some of the things that other children had. My children didn't want to hear that some of the time, but they understood because I communicated with them. However, as young adults, they both tell me how much it means to them all the time we spent together and that they knew their mom was always going to be there to support them. My presence at every football game, cheerleader, dance performance, PTA meeting, showed them by my actions that they were important to me and that their lives mattered to me. I could have been like a lot of moms who worked two and three jobs to get them a bunch of stuff that eventually breaks or gets old. But your time with your child is priceless and it's a gift that will forever live in their hearts. It will forever live in their hearts and it will give them what they need for life. Our relationship to God is like the relationship between a parent and a child. And unfortunately, sometimes the love we give is not returned to us or to God, but he only wants the best for us. So love your child. Even if they act like they don't want it, love them. Pour into them. Uh, people who know me know I don't watch a lot of TV. Um, but real life stories are always good ways to share great life lessons. There are a few uh, mm, there are a few here. I'm crying, so I'm trying to see through the tears. All right. <laughs> there are a few. Ah, there are a few for you to show the importance of your time spent with your children. A lady was on her cell phone, and a 13-year-old worked over, walked over to her, and stole her phone out of her hand and ran down the street. So, what would you say about a child? other than you wanted to give him some consequences for his actions. After your anger has subsided, would you think maybe something is missing from that child's life? It could be that he is living in poverty with no father figure, or maybe not even a mother figure. He could be being raised by a grandma, who knows? Maybe he is basically raising himself. One thing is clear, whoever his parents are who love him, didn't have the skills to pour into him for his particular needs. Let me tell you, there's a book, one of my favorite books, um, called, oh, it's written by Gary Chapman, and it's called Love Language. How we show love does not necessarily equal how our child needs to feel love. And it's a good book, and I recommend it to 
every parent. I really do. I recommend that book to every parent. Now, kids who do wrong, even when you have done all the right things. Yeah, some kids will do wrong when you've done everything right. Okay, this is what happened with this true story. He was caught. I'm still continuing with the story. And when the police, I saw this in the newspaper, okay. Mom said, he's a good boy, but he's just with the wrong crowd. I decided I needed a change of location as I continued on this book. So I went to my wonderful public library. So at this time, I started writing and I just wanted to get out of the house and I went to the library and I started writing. As I sit here typing, I finished the other story, y'all. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm sorry. But I'm in the library as I'm writing this part of the book. The other story is, I was just saying, the kid needed something. The kid was missing something. As I sit here typing, and I put my uh, drive into the PC, this happens. A young man who looks like he should be in high school or college says to me he sh something he shouldn't have said, then proceeds to say, don't let me have to say it again. <laughs> I will just say that this young man has some issues that need to be corrected. What happened to that child? He was dirty. He was smelly. And I found out later he was only 21 years old. What happened to him to bring him to that point? No matter what all the other issues are, time is one of them. In the world of education, we used to hear this term, no child left behind. I believe a preamble to that should have been, what did this child not receive? It all starts at the beginning, and that is at home. No child is like another. What one may need, another may not. But time is one thing they all require. A friend once told me years ago, <laughs> and if they're watching this, they're going to remember this. You are the only person I know with more than one child that people would think that each child is an only child. Every child needs to feel as if they are most important parts of your life. And it is our duty as a parent to instill that security in each of our children. Because remember, guys, we didn't, and our children, we didn't ask to be here. So since we did what we did to get them here, it's up to us to give them what they need so that they can be prepared for life. <laughs> a quote from Frederick Douglass says, It is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. It was one of these broken, I was one of these broken children, but I wasn't going to break mine. I wasn't. As we think on our own journeys in life, we may see this statement to be true. In my life, it was very true. It took many years, and I'm still healing, uh, for me to learn to trust God first because I had a distrust for people because I've been hurt by people so many times. And unfortunately, how we deal with people we can see carries over to God, whom we can't see. So thinking back, it looked impossible, but it wasn't. God and you are always the perfect partnership. You and God are the perfect pair. Together, you can raise children that people will come to your children and try to figure out what's going on, what happened. You know, with my kids, when they were really little, what was really funny, and this was even uh, in the first grade, my uh, my son's first grade teacher, Miss Martin, she, uh, when I came to pick him up, 
she laughed and told me about a uh, talk her and James had had because she was telling him uh, what a good student he was and and she said your parents should be really proud of you my first grade son those who know James know what a serious little boy he was he said thank you but I'm the way I am because of my mother which is sad because his dad wasn't um, you know has not been around but so don't think if you're doing this alone that God can't still get the glory. Listening to God makes up for everything you might lack. Everything you think you may lack. <laughs> uh, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. That's Matthew 19, 26. Oh, it's, it's possible. It's possible. I'm a witness, and I know many of you are as well. My heart broke as this story was shared with me. A young man was killed, born to a single parent. He was her only child. She shared that he did not need things. His mother got him everything he could ever want, but he became involved in gang activity. I hear these types of stories, unfortunately, too many times, no matter what the educational or income level of families. So please don't fool yourself for one moment thinking that because you may be of a higher income level than another, that this could never happen to your family. I talk to, to many community police officers in our neighborhood and they can give you many stories of children on gangs and stealing who come from very affluent homes. What do you think that child needs? I believe they can all benefit from more time. The person continues sharing and talking about how we as a community need to get involved and take up the slack. I do agree, but he needs her time first. Listening to her share prompted me to recall a story of someone who shared with me about his past. He would say all he ever wanted from his father, who lived in a home, was his time. He was an only child with both parents, and his father gave him everything he could ever imagine as a child, except his time. To this day, that person has followed, followed, fathered four children by three different women, and has not been a good father to any of his children. He didn't have the ability to fight against what he experienced and has allowed that ugly cycle to continue. Unless after we seek, unless we seek after the strength that is found in God to break those chains, we may all do the same thing that was done to us. It's a case of the blind leading the blind. In the world of substance abuse, a term was coined years ago that has been used over and over again for many reasons. Hurting people hurt people, and most of the time, it's not intentional. It's not. Right or wrong, people do what they know how to do. It's also insanity, though, to do the same thing but expect a different outcome. So, if you had needs and your parents didn't do what they needed to do. You can love them, but that don't mean you have to do the same thing with your children. Why? Do better. If you want different, do different. Your own personal discipline, faith, and hard work can break any cycle and begin anew. As long as you are breathing, you have time to do and be better. It just takes some time. When children are young and in elementary school, administrators all over see parents as so involved in our child's schooling, but it also drops dramatically as a child reaches middle and then less in high school. Whether they are in school, community, or whatever you choose for them to be, we should never be that missing piece. 
We are all busy and at times have allowed life to speak so loud that we can't hear God when he is talking and trying to guide us in reference to our children. We all have the ability to hear him. You may call it insight, intuition, or mother wit, but really it's the soft voice of God trying to assist us with life. Another way he speaks is through his word, his love story to us about how to deal with the situations in life, his list of instructions. Hey, Pastor Kirk, thank you. Okay, the, ol the holidays were approaching one year and I saw a picture that spoke volume to me. The picture at the top was of an empty classroom. The caption read, PTA meeting. And the picture at the bottom was of a department store with a long line of people waiting to get inside. Caption read, Black Friday sale. Is this the picture of the legacy we want to leave for our children? So we can't come to a PTA meeting, but we can all line up to buy them a pair of shoes. That in a month when they get one scuff on them, they're not going to be as no, they're not going to be as pressed about that shoe anymore. If you don't step forward and make a change, you'll always be in the same place. A bicycle cannot steer standing still. If you don't move forward, you're going to fall. What's stopping you? That's right, nothing. Nothing can stop us unless we allow it to. Sometimes as adults, we need to revisit how we felt during our childhood and as we were growing up. Also be able, when you make a mistake with your children, to apologize to them. It teaches them by example how to react during the times when they err and when they make a mistake. How to be a man or woman enough to have integrity and to always be honest about their shortcomings. I know it, y'all. We are the priests for our children. In Hebrews 5, 1 through 4, it says that we are to intercede on their behalf. Since we were not perfect as children, they won't be as well. And, then, and they need to know that even when they are wrong, we still love them during those times of correction. We must be a, a sympathetic ear, a compassionate heart that prays for them to our Father and goes to the Father for direction. How we are with them, teaching them in the mind of a child how God, their Heavenly Father, is. So what we do and how we react really does matter to a child when they see that they can freely share with us we are making them believe that God is the same way God's love is unconditional and never changing no matter how we are acting that day his agape love for us his creation made in his image he loves to spend time with us it takes 21 days to form a habit or to break a habit so we need to be more understanding as parents. Think back to what you did as a child. Did you immediately stop a bad behavior the first time? Even as adults, we still repeat some wrong behaviors. At times in front of our children, we, we repeat self-defeating patterns. So give your children time and show them that they can change. I hope you enjoyed the introduction and the first chapter of the book the Lord has given me. The top says, the creator, blah, the creator best knows how to bring out the best in his creation. Together, you make a dynamic team. The high calling, parenting from God's perspective. A book as I share my life and things I've learned and wisdom from God. I'll be reading from this on a weekly basis until it is finished. God bless. And again, happy Mother's Day. I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better way to pour into mothers today. 
and parents, but especially mothers since it's Mother's Day. I've seen a couple of dads on here as well. Hey, Bridget, cuz, happy Mother's Day, I love you. So, again, enjoy your day. It's your day, do what you wanna do. It's your day, do what you wanna do. It's your day, do what you wanna do. It's Mother's Day 2018. I love you all, be blessed, and nothing less. Okay, bye. This was fun. y'all maybe oh maybe my thank you Toya same to you okay I'm gonna have to take this down because it's acting silly it's on my tripod it's not oh I oh now I see why oh y'all see the paintings since I haven't done it yet uh if you had, didn't watch it from the beginning uh the information is there watch it watch it I'm, I'm gonna leave it on for replay Love you, Toya.